Hey everyone, in this series we're going to be looking at some SQL coding. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at the coding equivalents of some of the tasks that you already know how to perform, such as creating a table, adding columns to a table, adding a row so you actually add a value to a record. And you could say, well, why do I need to know how to do that? I already know how to do that manually. The main reason is that you may at some point need to create a fully automated process that requires or should actually prohibit any kind of human interaction or human intervention. Like for instance, maybe at the end of every day, you wanna create a table that stores a backup of all the day's transactions. Well, you don't want a person to have to come in here and create a table manually. What you do is you would use the create table command so as that you have this fully automated process doing it for you. So let's get into that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a blank form with a single button. The reason for it is the code will get executed when I click on the button, that way it's on demand. So as I mentioned, some of these tasks may actually run at night, triggered by it's 12.01 a.m. So let's do a backup of the day's activities, whatever. So there's different ways to make SQL code execute. We're doing it in this fashion again, so it's on demand. So we're just gonna click on blank form. I'm just gonna take a second to get rid of the record selectors. Really has no impact on this particular project, but it's a good habit to stay into because the record selectors may enable your users to navigate the database in a way you don't want them to. So just gonna to go to view, we're gonna to go design view, we're gonna to go to the design tab, we click on the property, property sheet button, and for record selectors and navigation buttons, I'm just gonna set those to no. Again, has no impact on this particular project, but it's a good habit to stay in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on button, just left click, drag, and it really doesn't matter what size the button is. You standard Windows warning, you can just click on open, and then we cancel out of this because we don't wanna use a wizard. We want to mainly attach the code. If you want, you can change the caption. You just highlight and we'll just say, run it, execute. Nice if I could type. So run it, execute, whatever. And so that gives us the basic way to execute the code. So with the button selected, we're now gonna click on the event tab and for the on-click event. In other words, when you click on the button, something's gonna happen. Click on the ellipsis, click on code builder, click on okay. And give ourselves some spaces. So what we're going to do here is there's going to be a standard introduction to each SQL command. That is D-O-C-M-D run SQL, so run SQL. And then what follows will be the SQL command, the entire command needs to be in quotes. So I'm just gonna paste this here so I don't make any mistakes, but we'll walk through it. So as you can see, the entire thing is surrounded by quotes. So this first command is create table. Now one of the things I like about SQL is it's self-documenting because create table very obviously creates a table. That's what I mean by self-documenting, that the code states exactly what it's doing. So you have create table. Then you have the name of the table. So notice there's no apostrophe surrounding it, no quotes or anything. You just straight out write the name of the table. So create table, it will be called our table. Then the next part has to be completely surrounded in parentheses. The next part, or should I say this part, is the creation of the actual fields within the table plus the type of data the field will store. So the field name is surrounded by brackets, square brackets, and it's the name of the field. In this case, it's EE underscore name, so employee name. Then a space, and then this is the type of data. So it's going to store text data. So let's go ahead and save that, and it's gonna want us to save our form too. 
Now let's jump back. And now what's going to happen is when we click on run it, it will create that table with that field and it will be able to store that data type. So we click on view. We click on run it. And sure enough, our table appeared over here. Double left click on it to open it up. Sure enough, E underscore name. Now we'll go to view, design view. And sure enough, it's short text. So it executed exactly what we wanted it to. Okay, so let's now look at our next example. So we've created a table, so now we want to put a value into that table. So let's go to View, Design View, button is already selected, on click event, click on the ellipsis. First we're going to first thing we're going to do is we're going to remark out this statement with a single apostrophe. We do not want to create another table again. Maybe at the end, we'll delete the table and then have all these run at once. So you can see, again, an example of a fully automated process. But right now, we have to learn the individual statements. So same format, docmd.runsql. And I'm going to paste this in again so I don't make any typos. So again, the entire command is surrounded by quotes. This time, the command is insert into and then again we see the name of our table so you're seeing a similar format this is saying create a table of this name this one is saying insert into this table by this name the next part again is sur surrounded by parentheses it is the name of the field the difference is in this case the field had square brackets here it does not have square brackets outside of the brackets you have the word values because that's what you're inserting. You're inserting a value. And then again, we have bracket, uh, excuse me, we have parentheses. And then single apostrophe, the value that you want to put into this field, this row, this record. And in this case, we're going to use test value. This could be whatever you want. And please note, yes, it's a single apostrophe, just like here but it's not remarking it out. In this case, the apostrophes are being used to surround a value, to declare a value. Okay, so let's save that. Go back to our form. We'll save that. Go to view. And we go to, we click on our button. It lets you know that one row is going to be appended. You click on yes. Now let's go into that table. There you go, we created a record. We created a row by putting a value for that field. Perfect. And as an aside, you don't have to necessarily use a constant value like we did there. It, you could use a variable. You could also take a field from a form that's open. We're not going to do that in this example because, again, I'm talking about an automated process that has no uh, data or input from a user, but you can do that as well. So on to the next command. So we will go back to view, design view, make sure the button is selected, event on click, click on the ellipsis. We remark this out. And again, we do do cmd dot run sql. Again, that pattern should start to become evident. Let's paste this in. Again, the entire command is surrounded by quotes. And this time, rather than insert into, it's delete from. So you're deleting from what? We're deleting from our table. So here we're going to see an operator that we hadn't seen up to this point where so now we're really adding a condition we want something to happen but under certain circumstances so we're deleting a record we're deleting a row from our table object next part is surrounded by parentheses ee underscore name is equal to apostrophe test value apostrophe so we're saying delete from this object the record even though so record is implied so delete from our table where 
this field is equal to this value. And as you know, we just added a record with that value. So let's save that. Save again, view, and let's run it. You're about to delete one row from the specified table. Yes. So you go back to our table. Sure enough, we deleted it. Okay, on to the next. Now, what if you decide that you really need additional fields to be added to the original table? So let's go to design view. Again, the button selected, event tab, on click, click on the ellipsis. Now, when you first create the table, let's just remark this out. When you first create the table, you can add additional fields here. It doesn't have to just be a one off, but for some reason, you need to add another field, some department says we want to start tracking such and such. So let's go ahead and add that. So again, docmd.run SQL, and we'll paste this in here. Again, entire command is surrounded by, or should I say the, the entire SQL code is surrounded by quotes, in this case, alter table which table our table so again it's using that basic logic of what you're doing to what object and then any conditions add column now in this case doesn't use parentheses does use the bracket though so we're going to do ee underscore age and as you can see, we're going to use a different data type. So up here, we said we're creating a table with EE underscore name as text. Here it's EE underscore age with integer. So the formatting of the code is very similar. You have the field name in brackets followed by the type. The only thing that's different is we don't have the parentheses. So when you're doing this, no parentheses required. I just want to point out the differences because sometimes, so obviously syntax always matters. And so it's these kind of inconsistencies in syntax that I want to call out because even one or two symbols out of place is enough to break the, the line and not work. So I just want to point out these inconsistencies in the way the syntax works. Okay, so... Again, we're going to alter the table. How are we going to alter the table? We're going to add a column, and it's going to be of an integer format. Let me save that. Let me go to view. Run it. Doesn't look like anything happened. Go to our table, and now you have EE age. So, for whatever reason, certain things you get advisories about and certain things you do not get advisories about. In the words of my database professor, because it's access. We, we'd say, why is it? And he's like, because it's access, because it's access. So it does lots of things because it's access. And if we go to view and then design view, you can see, sure enough, it is a number format. Okay, on to the next. So now that we know how to create a table, we know how to populate values into that table, create rows, records. We know how to modify the table itself, the structure of the table by adding columns. Let's now look at dropping the table entirely, deleting the table entirely. So we go to view, design view, buttons are selected. And then we will remark this out. And then again, the same formatting, do command dot run SQL. And again, in quotes, and it's drop table as opposed to delete table. So drop table R table. And here's a good example where verbiage makes a difference that if you were trying to find help with performing this task and you didn't realize the verbiage was drop, you might be searching delete table and not find any results. So that's one of the challenges with coding is that 
if the coding is not in the verbiage that you would expect, it might be difficult to get help. And unfortunately, I don't have any answer or any solution for that. But if you're not finding any results, try changing the verbiage and that maybe that will give you what you're looking for. Because again, even though we said delete for a record, we're using drop for the table as a whole. So it's not delete table, it's drop table. So that's more of an FYI than anything else, because like I said, I don't have a solution. Just if you're not finding what you're looking for, try changing the verbiage. So we'll save that and then we'll run it. And there you go, the table was deleted. Okay, so I think the last thing to do for this particular tutorial is we'll have them all run in sequence except for the drop table because what's the point of creating a table and adding to it and putting in rows if we're just going to delete it. So let's go back to design view and we will remark out the drop. And I think we'll also remark out the delete because we want to make sure that the, whoops, sorry. All right, so we want to create the table. We want to insert a value into the table. We're not going to do the delete of the value because we want to make sure that the addition worked. So we're going to keep create table, insert a value, insert a record, and then alter the table by adding a new column. We'll save that. Save this, and as you can see, the table's not there like we just looked, just observed. Run, you're about to append one row. So again, you're not getting a notice that the table's being created. They're just letting you know that you're appending a row to it. And there's our table. And now you have a table that has two columns and one record. So congratulations, you have an automated process. This is obviously very rudimentary and that this particular set of commands may not be something that you need per se, so much as this is the foundation of you, how you create a logical progression, how you have the table created and that you add values to the table, so on and so forth. So I think this would be a good place to stop for this video. And if you want, please leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see how to do. Maybe there is a certain task that you want perform to be performed and you believe that SQL might be the way to do it. Just let me know and I'll see if I can make it work. Keep in mind, it's difficult to do demonstrations if I don't know the entire structure of a database, so I'll probably have to simplify it. Um, but that's, I do want to mention that, that I will do my best to try to uh, create the routine that you're looking for, the automated process you're looking for. Just keep in mind, you might have to tweak it, obviously, for the names of the tables you're using, the fields that you're using, that kind of thing. So I hope this was helpful. And um, I do plan on doing a couple more of these, even if there aren't any suggestions, because this is obviously very rudimentary. This was just creating table, modifying the table, adding values, and dropping a table. Okay, so again, I hope that this was helpful and uh, I hope you have a good day.